All right, guys. Uh, uh, we're gonna do the setup now for uh, Tau Ceti Planetary Crisis. Um, what I've done is I've kind of done a little preliminary work here, just to save some time for you guys. And uh, so I've set up the uh, galaxy map, um, the the central Tau Ceti system. I've set up the Galactic Exchange, the Galactic Depot, uh, shuffled the uh, Crisis card, Specialist cards, and have the player mat sitting out here. Uh, so I'm going to explain to you what I did uh, in each of those and there's a few things that I've left that I have not done just because I wanted you to uh, to uh, kind of go through in detail on how I'm going to do this. Um, so the first thing uh, that you notice is there are three players here so what I'm going to do is uh, the setup in the solo mode is really um, almost exactly the same as the multiplayer. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up for a solo game and, and uh, tape that one first and then I'll do the multiplayer game later um, so uh, that's why I'm doing it in this order so what I've done is I've created the uh, system in the center uh, the way that normally happens is you put the Tau Ceti tile that's that's kind of your starting point and then each player after you've shuffled the central hex tiles uh, takes a tile and places it and you can place it any way you want uh, so you can be very creative uh, in this particular case uh, I have all of the tiles uh, really touching each other, but um, there are cases if you get creative where, hey, you may be able to make holes. I've, I've done that um, just the way that I've done them. So you do what you, whatever you feel like uh, uh, you want to do, and it'll be fine. Um, but I just wanted to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see, hopefully. So I tried to pick the most uh, vibrant colors um, because the, I just want something the camera can pick up well. Um, because I, I have a 1080p camera, but I don't have a high def camera, a 4K camera, uh, and my lighting is uh, not not quite where I want it to be. But that's all right. We'll do it with what we got. Right? That's what we game in. So that's uh, where I'm coming from. So anywho, uh, I've got the tile set up. Um, I've populated the three home worlds. So I'm going to be playing as the Confederation of Terrans. Um, that is the pink. Uh, they're the easiest to see, I think. Them are the blue. Uh, they're also playing with the uh, the AI. is going to be the Junin Collective. That's the green guys right here. So here's me. Green guys right here. Um, and then I'm going to be playing the uh, AI of the Azarian Emissaries. Um, which are up here. I'm sorry. I told you my home world's up here. It's right here. Zarin Emissaries, Terrans, Junins, and these are going to be my guys. Uh, so the other thing that I did is I took all of the tokens, uh, the knowledge tokens, and that look like this. I don't know if you remember those. Uh, I shuffled them up and I placed them onto the uh, hexes on the roots, the exploration points. Uh, which is right here. So if you see um, down here, we've got this these two exploration points. So I've got those on there. I populated that. Uh, I placed the ships, the mother ships, and the uh, orbitals on the home world. Now, just just so you remember a couple things, I want to point out about this. Uh, first of all, is I am using the premium components. So if you do not have the premium edition and you have the standard edition. It's going to be exactly the same, it's just you'll have the wooden discs and the uh, ship markers for yours and you'll place those the same way on the planets. Um, also note that over here in the Altari, uh, the backs of those are different. There are six of those tokens, uh, so you'll get four of those randomly, place them on there, uh, and those, um, so those are a little bit different. They don't have two per. So. That's the setup for the central system. Um, and um, so next, let's take a look at the uh, faction mats for each of the players. Um, once we look at the faction mats, we'll look at the Tau Ceti Exchange and the Galactic Depot, uh, and then we'll get this thing started. All right, guys, uh, here's the faction mats. Um, I know you can't see the bottom one as well. I don't have quite enough room to get it in. Uh, and and uh, still be where you can see it, but 
you can see the green one pretty well. So uh, what I've done is on each of the mats, I've set the mats up. I've given them their starting energy, their starting uh, towel, and I've set their uh, markers out. So we'll look at the uh, Dr. Cringy first. Uh, so this is Dr. Cringy. This is Dr. Cringy. Uh, so you can see he starts with uh, 16 tau and 8 energy. So I have uh, the marker on a 6 and the marker uh, on the 10, so that's 16. And then 8 on the other side there. Um, I've set all four of these up. Now the other thing I have to do is uh, we need to make the bag that we draw from because remember there's two phases the enlightenment phase and the action phase so I'm playing with three uh, Three players even though two of them are AI so the other three factions that I'm not using at all I'm gonna take two cubes From each of their of each of their colors and there's two cubes of each of their colors and I'm gonna put them in this bag Okay drop them in there and then I'm going to take five cubes from each of the three factions that I am playing and I'm going to drop them in the bag as well okay and this is going to be the bag this is where we're going to draw cubes out to see if a crisis occurs what planet it occurs on and then if you do uh, successfully explore on a route uh, explore a knowledge token or you can uh, explore an exploration point you'll be able to drop uh, just shaking this up right quick give it a good shake you'll be able to drop well, one of your cubes there and if you build an orbital that will go back to your home world and uh, as I said give you uh, give you the um, additional tower energy however you want to spend your points so I just kind of all mixed together in the bag Not quite all of them but most of them there so that's how that worked give them a good shake again so that's ready to go. Now, um, what I've also done, so one of the differences between the multiplayer and the solo is that the AI um, will not get uh, objective tokens. Okay, So they do not have objectives that they're trying to complete. Uh, one of the things that they do is they actually get um, points for cards that you don't get. Okay, so you, you do their scoring a little bit differently. So because of that, they actually do not get um, they do not get the objective cards, and they don't get commodities. Okay, uh, and also cabinet member cards are not used because what's going to happen is in a typical game you'd have somebody that's the first player. They would take the first player cabinet card, which would go right here on the map, and that card would uh, they'd be the first player. They'd hand the other ones out, and then you would go in order. The way solo mode works is uh, instead of doing that, what's going to happen is I'm going to take as the the, the human player I'm going or not the human player because I guess I'm technically playing Terrence uh, as the real player, not the AI. Uh, I'm going to take all four of my actions, and actually what's going what you're going to see is the actions that I take are going to determine how uh, the AI reacts on the card. So on the cards. Let me see if this, I don't know if this will really help any. If I can hold it a little bit more still. Yeah, maybe. Ooh. There we go. Focus. So on the cards, you can see there's two columns right there. Okay. So what happens is, depending on whether I do actions from the left column or right column on my uh, player mat, um, and there's a, there's a bar here that's going to show you moving moving uh, resolve crisis is in a crisis in the center it's that's the same on everybody's mat all the other ones are jumbled up in, in a different order um, but that's going to determine what column um, what column I use to take their actions so uh, that's the player mat let's take a look at the depot galactic depot and the Tau City exchange and then we can start the very first round All right, guys. Um, let's take a look right quick at the Galactic Depot and the Tau Ceti Exchange. Whoops, that got shifted. All 
All right, so uh, at the beginning of the game, uh, and again, this is the same thing as in multiplayer, uh, we take these crisis tokens. Remember, these are the tokens that represent the crises if they happen, uh, and they have the backs that have a symbol. Uh, one of the markets, um, oops, I can't really see it, got them covered. Had a uh, error earlier. Light fell over and kind of messed my stuff up. They match one of the six symbols down here. So, for instance, this symbol matches this one right here. So, these are what we're going to put out on the board uh, if a crisis occurs on a planet. So, we put these up here. Order does not matter along this row. Um, we put the Tau City Exchange, uh, excuse me, the uh, cycle marker here on one because that's where we're starting. We have the crisis cards on the left, specialist cards on the right. Uh, down here, you'll see that I've got, uh, this is where I'm going to roll the dice at in this tray. Um, also, if I pull a card, I'll put it in here just hopefully so you can see it a little bit better. So that's, uh, that's where all that's going to happen. Over here to the left, uh, I've got the outer limit tiles, the knowledge tokens flip face down, and uh, the dark matter tiles. That we talked about uh, also this bag right here I'm going to use this uh, in just a second for commodities so if you see me grab this bag that's what that is uh, to pull the commodities out for each cycle and then up here at the top which uh, can you see that no you can't really see that up here at the top and I'll just show it to you right now I've got this little shoe holder for these cards these are kind of chimera sized cards uh, we will not be using the cabinet cards but I've got the interplanetary missions, the card, the specific cards for the Altari system, and the um, knowledge crisis cards uh, also on the far left there. So that's where I'll be drawing those from. Um, I think that's it for now. So let's go back to the uh, map and let's, uh, let's check that out. And we'll place the commodity tokens and get everything ready there. All right, guys, uh, here's the map. Uh, like I said, I had a little bit of an issue earlier, but I think I've got it fixed. Um, so what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to uh, seed the commodity bag. So if you remember, I just talked about this blue bag here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of each of the six commodities. Pull those out here. It's going to take two, two of the six commodities. Okay, so I've got that one, algae, octo nano, telepathic generators, and ah, here we go, octo nano. So there's the six, six commodities. So I'm going to get two of each of those. Do, do, do. Boom, 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 and one more. Boom. All right. And I'm going to place the extra ones just over here to the side. Okay. I'm going to drop all these in to the bag. Give them a good shake. Give them a good mix up there. So, all right, cool. That's done. Um, all right, so let me show you. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna switch the, uh, the feed here, but let me show you the um, AI. So I told you before that the AI has their own um, order of things that happen, okay? So let me show you the first, uh, the first card, the Azarian AI. There's the Azarian AI. Um, what that's gonna look, what that's gonna show you is you're gonna see uh, on the card, there's basically two, um, two sides, okay? So, depending on what options I choose, either this first column or the second column is what I'm going to pick from. Uh, and that, again, that choice is going to be based on what I do on the map. 
And when I do that, oh, I guess I need to move this a little bit further down. We're going to get a better look at it there. Um, when I do that, I'm going to roll a die. And one through six, and I'm going to choose one of these options, right? Whatever, whatever it rolls, that's what I'm going to choose. Now, it's important to note that just below these two columns, right, in the uh, white and gray here, are two additional options. So if one of those two options, if I have more than one damage on a system, then I'm gonna repair everything, pay the cost, then explore, do an interplanetary mission and recruit. If I'm in column one or do something uh, similar in column two. And also when I do that, I'm gonna look at the energy and if I have less than four energy, then I'm gonna gain four, um, I'm going to refuel, sorry, not gain four. I'm going to refuel, which gives me five energy, and then do um, the two two options there. So what you need to know with this on the solo side, uh, you know, if it's multiplayer, you get to choose uh, whatever you do. That's totally up to you. Um, but on the solo side, you roll that dice. If uh, one of those two, the white or gray options, is your uh, is an option, then you have to take it and that constitutes the entirety of your turn. Um, if you can do one of the, if uh, sorry, if one of those two options, the white or the gray option, uh, is not true, then you roll the dice and you, you pick the column, you roll the dice, and you do as many of those options, uh, actions that are in there as you can. So it may be for some reason that, let's say that you have a really low amount of tile and you can't do a repair action. Well, you just skip that action and you go to the next one if that happens to be in your list. So uh, we may see that. So that's the Azarian AI, and that will be the blue player. Uh, let's look at the Junin AI. Um, what you'll notice too is if you if you if you compare the Azarian, uh, you see a lot more Tau building up. Uh, Whereas with the Junin here, you don't see a whole lot of Tau on one side, but on the other side you see six, seven, eight. So there's kind of each AI, they're all different, but I, I feel like overall you kind of have a theme. There's some things that they tend to want to do more. Um, and by the way, the way that I picked these, I think I told you, but I'll tell you again. This is just based on the color, but if I, if I wasn't recording this, I usually just shuffle up uh, all the AI cards and draw however many AIs I want, and that's the AIs that I play against, and then I pick from what's left. Or sometimes I'll pick the one I want and then just draw all random ones. But that's how that works for me. Um, so that's their card. Um, and then, um, obviously, I don't have a card playing as the Terrans, but I will show you uh, what I've got objective-wise. Um, So there's my objectives, advanced capabilities program, so I need to get those three items. Now the cool thing in this case is actually two of the three items um, on each of the cards are the same. So again, when I was giving you the example, if I get four of the first one and four of the third one, I've actually completed the requirements for both of these cards, which, which is great because it's going to make my life a lot easier. I don't have to get as many different commodities when I'm buying or selling. So that's always a plus. All right. Um, so uh, we've got our bag over here, by the way, just to remind you, this is where we've got all our uh, all of our uh, all of our pieces in it here. All the cubes we'll pull from that. I'm just gonna set these over here to the side. Um, let me grab. I set it down. Let me grab the rule book just to be safe. Right, I feel fairly, fairly <laughs> sure I'll need it at some point. Um, Okay, um, also let me show you two other cards. So 
in in some cases the AI's actions work a little bit different like with movement with upgrading with building um, how they do that where they go to do that is always going to be a little bit different so for the solo play oops, for the solo play there is a card that has the AI actions that explains specifically with the actions what you do uh, obviously like move and refuel um, don't really need explanation because actually in the solo game uh, there really isn't a move action um, they take some actions like build or um, explore that, um, that that will you know they move around on their own you don't have to choose that whereas you have to choose to move if you want to do that so there's that then there's another card when we talk about battles if we get to a battle hopefully we will so I can show you um, it'll tell you show you what you do for the battles um, where they're gonna place their shield to shield values if they have shields whatever their level is and then you'll commence to do the battle just like you would in a normal battle so that's that card and I'm gonna keep those over here to the side as a handy reference also don't forget um, again this BGG uh, commodities and their uses super super helpful um, all you can see here uh, it tells you the special uses now note that for the AI the special abilities of their um, leaders does not work uh, it work yours works for the um, special abilities they have the AI will not use those special abilities okay so they're just they're gonna get points in other ways so their special ability does not work you however can use uh, that special ability so I think that is all the setup so now um, let's really let's really get into the uh, really get into the meat of the game so um, oh one other thing that I didn't need to mention AIs do not get commodities so I will be getting commodities just like I normally would when we do placement but the AI um, will not um, and I, again I, I played this a couple times but I'm gonna keep the rule book with me so bear with me because I want to make sure that I give you guys an accurate representation um, of the game. Again, this is an awesome game. Um, I, I'm going to thank Outer Limit Games again. Uh, they got they did a phenomenal job, I think, on this game. Super, super enjoy it. Highly recommend if you can get it that you get it. Um, so, all right. So, setup. The one more thing we need to do for setup, uh, really, before we start, is we need to hand out the crisis and the um, specialist cards now remember that um, the crisis and specialist cards there what's gonna happen with these I say remember like I told you I don't think I told you um, we're gonna hand out these cards and they're gonna use these cards uh, to contribute during the um, crisis phase and when you contribute during the crisis phase you will get energy for contributing cards uh, it is important to note that in fact uh, the AI will also get energy for contributing cards so don't don't uh, don't forget that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hand out each player this includes the AI will get one crisis card and two specialist cards so we're gonna go ahead and do that now I'm not going to look at the uh, specialist cards or crisis cards that the AI have. They're going to just lay them face down, shuffle them uh, at the beginning of each turn, and then randomly contribute one uh, in solo. If you're playing uh, in multiplayer, you can contribute as few or as many as you wish. Just remember that in uh, multiplayer and even in uh, for you in solo, there is a hand limit of seven. So. Um, you can't just you know stack up a bunch of cards you do have to do some hand uh, hand management all right 
So again, that's one crisis, two specialists. So I'm going to take one crisis, two specialists. There's one crisis, two specialists for the green player, the Junins. Going to take one crisis, two specialists. One crisis, two specialists for the blue player, the Azarians. And then I'm going to take one crisis and two specialists for myself. Um, and this is what I got. So I got a chemical uh, crisis effect AI command ships on the planet or an adjacent sector and curry damage to their cargo. Uh, I got Cryptologist, this is an advanced card. So the way these cards work is I can play advanced cards. Um, and, and basically keep those out uh, each turn. Uh, or in some of the advanced cards I can play them for a one time effect. Um, for in this case, I can discard immediately to resolve a nuclear or geophysical crisis, no knowledge token required. So they're very powerful. There's only like 30 cards, and, and the size and thickness of the crisis deck, which is really, really thick, um, it's really, really nice to have those. I uh, also got a physicist card, right? So I can uh, resolve a nuclear crisis with that card. Or if it's still in my hand, uh, and if I'm in possession of it at the end of the game, it's worth one point. Galactic point. Note also that the uh, chemical crisis is indeed also worth one point. All right. So that I believe is the setup. So let's go and uh, let's start the crisis phase and get this party started. <laughs> 